Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, UN rights investigators accuse Burundi's government of keeping up a campaign of abuse against critics and opponents of President Pierre Kurenziza. Bujibura slams a report calling it lies and demanding an apology. Morocco is preparing for the trial of the alleged rapist of Khadija Ukaru. The 17-year-old appeared with tattoos on her body that she says were made by around a dozen men who kidnapped and raped her over two months. And we take a look at the work of a Kenyan creative who's turned his apartment into a studio and discarded items into art. But first, UN rights investigators have accused Burundi's government of keeping up a campaign of abuse against critics and opponents of President Pierre Kurenziza. The country slipped into chaos after 2015 when, Buj when uh, Kurenziza vowed to run for a third term. That was eventually successful, but his critics have said that it was unconstitutional. Bujumburas slammed the UN report, calling it lies and demanding an apology. It's a damning report by UN investigators on the situation in Burundi. They say President Pierre Kurunziza's speeches encouraged crimes against humanity. They also targeted the intelligence service and the Imbune Rakuri, the ruling party's youth league. There is an almost total impunity for the police, the National Intelligence Service and the youth league of the ruling party. Not a single case has been opened against these people who are committing serious human rights violations. The report mentions summary executions, enforced disappearances, arbitrary detention, torture and sexual violence. We spoke to Burundi's ambassador at the UN, who strongly rejected the report. This commission was created by specific people, whose aim is regime change in Bujumbura. We have never recognized the legitimacy of this commission. This idea of dividing the world into good and bad pupils is not a good way to move forward. Instead, we need cooperation and dialogue. The crisis in Burundi began in April 2015, when Kurunziza said he would run for a third mandate. The opposition said he wasn't allowed to and took to the streets. Three months later, he was re-elected. Protests were repressed. These last three years, more than 1,000 people have been killed. 400,000 have fled the country. In May, the constitution was changed after a referendum. In theory, Kurunziza could now stay in power until 2034. In June, he stunned many when he said he would not run again in the presidential poll in two years' time. But his critics remain sceptical. Several Chinese staff members were detained in Nairobi on Wednesday after Kenyan police raided the African headquarters of China's CGTN international TV network. All the journalists who were arrested were released after their immigration documents were checked. Police say that the operation was part of a crackdown on illegal immigration. China and Kenya do have strong bilateral relations, though, with Beijing funding the lion's share of a multi-billion euro railway linking Nairobi to the coastal city of Mombasa. Three firefighters were killed in South Africa on Wednesday in a blaze that swept through the upper floors of a building in downtown Johannesburg. One man fell whilst the other two were found inside. The fire was reportedly caused by an electrical fault. The several departments of the Gauteng provincial government has offices at the site. It's not thought to have been compliant with basic health and safety regulations. And the Congolese city of Butembo has seen its first death from Ebola in the most recent outbreak of the disease. The epidemic's killed 85 people since July. Most victims have been in villages. About 20, though, were in the city of Beni. And the fatality in Butembi increases the risk of further spread. Although the World Health Organization says that a response is already in place in the eastern trading hub, it is much harder to contain Ebola in urban centres. Now, in Morocco, the trial of the alleged rapist of Khadija Okaru begins on Thursday. The 17-year-old appeared with tattoos on her body that she says were made by men she accuses of having kidnapped and raped her over two months. Twelve suspects have been arrested. Francois Wibo has more. On her skin, she bears the scars of her two-month ordeal. Just days after returning home, Khadija agreed to share her story with a local news channel. 
I was at my aunt's house. I was meant to be spending the week there. My cousin and I were right in front of the house when several men arrived who I didn't know. They had a knife. They took me by force, they raped me, they tattooed me, and I woke up one morning and my arm was completely swollen and painful. I recognized one of the men. He let the others do it in exchange for money. While some in Morocco have raised questions about her retelling of events, Khadija's chilling tale caused a wave of indignation and compassion throughout the country. So far, 12 suspects have been identified, all of them over 18. The charges include kidnapping, human trafficking, rape, death threats and torture. We're going to ask the examining magistrate for a professional medical assessment of the mental and physical trauma Khadija endured. We're going to insist on the fact that this was a minor who was kidnapped, held against her will and tortured, both physically and mentally, by delinquents, most of whom had criminal records. If found guilty, the men could face up to 30 years behind bars. Look now at the work of a Kenyan creative who's turned his apartment into a studio and discarded items into art. Evans often comes to this rubbish tip in the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. For him, it's a source of inspiration. His next creation is probably hiding among the waste. I'm collecting whatever material I find, like parts of a motorcycle. So by the look of things, this will end up into a very amazing sculpture. In his makeshift workshop, Evans transforms the cast-aside objects into works of art. Although he studied painting, little by little, he swapped his brushes for a more original art form. All my life, I've been that kid that loved collecting stuff since I was a kid. But it never blossomed until I went to compass, you know, where we started creating artwork from unconventional materials. Sculptures, pictures, and even jewelry. For this 29-year-old, the possibilities are endless. The peacock, this was inspired by the culturally, you know, the forks and the spoons. Because I was out buying my junk and I saw them for so many, and I thought these ones would fit very much into the peacock. For Evans, recycling rubbish and reducing waste has become a way of life that he hopes will catch on in Kenya. It's not only people that need second chances, but also those objects that cannot speak for themselves. They need that second chance before you can trust them, just re re rethink about them. A full-time artist, Evans held his first exhibition in Nairobi a few months ago. He's now working flat out on new pieces that he hopes to display to the public soon. Uganda has reinstated a music festival that the country's ethics minister tried to scrap because he said it was an orgy of sex, nakedness and drugs. Simon Lokodo tried to cancel the four-day party on the banks of the Nile on Tuesday. For the latest last three years, the Niege Niege festivals brought together artists from across Africa in the town of Jinja. Over 10,000 people are thought to turn up. After public outcry, the interior minister overruled his colleague and ordered the event back on on Wednesday. It'll be kicking off on Thursday. Well, that's it for Eye in Africa for now. Thanks for joining us. Do so again. Take care. Here at France 24, we're taking a broad outlook by talking about the women who are reshaping our world. In France 24, in Spanish, we don't have themes vedados. Y eso se puede ver en televisión y en todas las plataformas que tenemos en Internet. Chez France 24, la NAMSA, on a dit que vous avez 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 وأيضا رياضية بأعين خبراء رياضيين هذه هي قناة خوزان كاتر 
le lac Nokoué qui borde notamment Cotonou et le garde manger du Bénin. Mais il perd aujourd'hui de son potentiel économique. La surpêche prive les plus démunis de leurs revenus. Alors que la mangrove est pillée et que la pollution des jacinthes d'eau obstrue la navigation, notre observateur Arnaud Adikpeto et son ONG parviennent néanmoins à sensibiliser les autorités grâce aux cartes et aux images établies par leurs drones. The Observers Direct, on France 24 and France24.com.